Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for another opportunity to hear from you. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that your spirit will have its way in our midst this morning. We pray that let your word be embedded in our lives. Let men be men, but Lord, let your name be glorified. So speak through me to your glory and to your honor. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. This morning, I want to briefly speak on the topic, a wise vessel. A wise vessel. The Bible talk that, talks about, say in a great house, there are so many vessels. Say some to honor, some to dishonor. But this morning, we want to talk about the vessel that is wise. Quickly, let's look at Second Chronicles chapter 1. Verse 7 to 12. Second Chronicles chapter 1. 7 to 12. On that night... God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask what shall I give you? And Solomon said to God, You have shown great mercy to David, my father, and have made me king in his place. Now, O Lord God, let your promise to David, my father, be established for you. Have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this great people of yours? Then God said to Solomon, Because this was in your heart, and you have not asked riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemy, nor have you asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. And I will give you riches and wealth and honor such as none of the king have had who were before you nor shall any other after you have the like. When we talk about being wise, it goes basically with two things, knowledge and wisdom. And if you look at Solomon, Solomon had two brothers, other brothers called Absalom and Ammon. If we look at the scripture, we we'll know their story. Ammon slept with the sister in a corny way. And Absalom went into a conspiracy against his father. So you could see two children who were obviously exhibiting foolishness. Solomon, we could not see any record to show that Solomon was like his brothers before he became king. There's nothing to show that Solomon was foolish or unwise before he became king, at least when we compare the story of his brothers with him. But what am I trying to bring out? Even though Solomon was near to being a good boy, but when he became king, he still asked God for what? Wisdom. If it was Absalom or Ammon that were asking this, uh, it would be like a normal thing. But Solomon, 
ask God for wisdom. And he said, he was basically, he said, give me wisdom for this thing that I am about to do. That tells me like, it's not the wisdom you, or the knowledge you had for yesterday is not sufficient or it's not a template for every other ch challenges, for every other thing that will come up. You don't have one wisdom for all. So Solomon asked for wisdom, and, and, God, and God was impressed. God said, because you have not asked anybody, but have asked for wisdom and knowledge for this purpose of what you are about to go. So you need to know that whatever you, stage you are in life, what brought you to where you are cannot take you to where you are going. And that was what Solomon understood. Now, why is wisdom and knowledge <laughs> so important? If we go back to look at the story of Job, I'm sure we can say so many good things about Job, right? Upright man who feared God, who's a good man. Can somebody, let's go to Job 34, 35, 34. The book of Job, chapter 34, from verse 34 and 35. Men of understanding say to me, wise men who listen to me, Job speaks without knowledge. His words are without wisdom. As good as Job was, it was recorded that Job, he said, he speaks without what? Knowledge. And his words without what? Wisdom. You may ask, what did Job even say? Go to 34 verse 5. For Job has said, I am righteous, but God has taken away my justice. Job did not know what was happening. But this is how Job looked at himself. And at the end, it was said that Job was speaking without knowledge and without wisdom. What is knowledge? What is knowledge? I will simply define it as knowledge is knowing what you should know. Knowledge is what? Knowing what you should know. And what is wisdom? Wisdom is knowing how to apply knowledge. It's one thing to know something. It's another thing to know how to do what? Apply it. And if you look at the scripture, any time that these two words are mentioned hand in hand. In other words, you cannot be wise without what? Knowledge. And knowledge that is not applied is as good as not nothing. So when the Bible says that Job has no knowledge, I was, was speaking without knowledge, and without wisdom. They are always mentioned hand in hand. So when, we are, when, when I, in this course of this message, whenever I ever say wisdom, just know that inside that wisdom is embedded knowledge. Knowledge alone. If you have knowledge alone, it can be harmful. First Corinthians 8, 1 Corinthians 8.1. If you have knowledge alone, it can be harmful. If you do not apply wisdom to knowledge. 1 Corinthians 8 verse 1. Now concerning things offered to idols, we know 
that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs off, but love edifies. What I want to pick out there is, he said what? Knowledge does what? Knowledge puffs off. If you have just knowledge, it can be harmful. You need wisdom to apply knowledge. How do we attain to knowledge and wisdom? The first thing that the Bible tells us, Proverbs 9, 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Proverbs 9, 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Remember I tell you, anytime you see wisdom, you see knowledge being mentioned. Proverbs 3, 7. Proverbs 3, 7. Do not be wise in your own eyes, but do what? Fear the Lord and depart from evil. The first way to become wise is to have the fear of the Lord. If the fear of the Lord can stop you from taking the wrong decision, from doing things that others you would like to do, that is the first way to become wise, to fear God in all that you do. Praise the Lord. How else do we attain knowledge? By humility. Proverbs 8, 12 to 13. By humility. Be humble to listen and to learn. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The, f- the fear of the Lord is to hate, to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. What I want to pick out there is pride and arrogance. One of the ways to attain knowledge is by humility. Success can lead to the greatest failure, which is pride. Because pride goes before what? A fall. And failure can lead to the greatest success, which is humility. And, 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 and what is humility? Humility is freedom from the need to prove you are superior all the time. Did you get that? Humility is freedom from the need to prove that you are superior all the time. Humility is awareness that there is a lot you don't know and that a lot of what you think you know is distorted or may be wrong. Let's look at 1 King 19, 13 to 17. When I say that humility is the awareness that there are a lot of things you don't know. And a lot of what you think you know might be distorted or wrong. You remember the story of Elijah? That's what the story there. When he was running away from Jezebel, he got to a place. And when God met him, what did he say? He said, he said he's the only person that is left of all the prophets. Let me read it. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in the mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, turned down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they speak, seek to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, anoint Hazel as king over Syria. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimish, and as king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, and you shall anoint as prophet in the place. It shall be that whoever escapes Hazel, Jehu wicked, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. 
Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to bow, and every mouth that have not done what kissed him. But what did he, Elijah say before then? He said only him was left. But God told him, I have reserved how many? 7,000. When I say that, humility, a lot of things you think you know might be wrong or might be distorted. And that's why I say humility is that freedom to, from the need to prove that you are superior all the time. What was lacking? What was Elijah lacking there? Knowledge. Because knowledge is, remember I define knowledge as knowing what you should what? Know. But at that point, Elijah did not know that there are people who are in, like him. He lacked knowledge. And because he lacked knowledge, his words that he spoke was not with wisdom. That was then that happened to Job. Because Job lacked knowledge of what was going on between God and Satan. What did he say? The Lord has taken away my justice. And that he spoke, he spoke without knowledge. And because there is no knowledge, the word came out without wisdom. So you should, as much as lies within you, seek to know what you should know. Don't be ignorant in the abundance of knowledge. Praise the Lord. You get wisdom by listening to wise men. By listening to wise men. It says in, verse, in that Job 34, uh, 34, it says, Men of understanding say to me, Wise men who listen to me. You get wisdom by listening. Hearing is not the same thing as listening. What did I say? Hearing is not the same thing as listening. You can hear the word, but you cannot hear, if you are not listening, you cannot hear what the person is saying. So many times, I have, when I, going back in the morning, close from work, I normally leave, leave the radio on to listen to the news. But sometimes, I get home, and I forgot I didn't hear the weather, weather forecast. But it was he said, it was said. But at that time, most time, my mind, I'm thinking some things. Even though the radio is playing and my ear is open, I'm here. But because I am not listening, that's why I say hearing is not what listening. Certain things you do, do you know sometimes you'll be thinking, you don't, you're not even looking at the road, but you'll not miss where you're going to. You not, but because your, 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 your brain already knows how to work. So even though you did not miss your road, that does not mean that you, you know that somebody called you, you just, mm, because you are absent-minded, but you did not have accident. So, so, and that is what we do sometimes. We just, we hear what people say, but we are not listening to what they are saying. And when you are not listening, that is, you give the wrong answers. You will not answer with empathy. You will not answer with, with, with compassion because you did not even understand what the person was saying. We're talking about being a wise vessel. Listening will make you wise. Praise the Lord. Dropping emotion and fast sometimes so that we can reach to the truth. Emotions and fast can make you unwise. Sometimes we need to drop emotions and facts. When they brought the adulterous woman to Jesus, what was the fact? The fact was that she was caught in idolatry. There was emotions that was there. But Jesus overlooked the emotions and the facts at that time, and Jesus responded to the truth. And what was the truth? 
all have seen and come short of the glory of God. And that was why Jesus said, if any man, let him who is, has, does not have sin cast the first stone. Was Jesus trying to justify what the woman has done? Was Jesus denying the fact? But he faced the truth. So sometimes you can attain wisdom by suspending emotions and facts and facing the truth. The truth is that all have seen and come short of the glory of God. 1 Timothy 3.7 First Timothy three second sorry second Timothy three seven second Timothy three seven sorry always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of what there is a knowledge that is called knowledge of truth ever what always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. So when I say that, sometimes suspend your emotions and facts and do what? Face the truth. And that was what Jesus did. All have seen and come short of the glory of God. You become knowledgeable by reading. I like to read. And I encourage you to read. Read all manner of things. I know... You know, you know why I say people should read? The Bible says that in the latter days, knowledge shall what? Knowledge shall increase. So how can knowledge be increasing and you're not increasing your knowledge? You're not increasing your knowledge. No. Increase, expand what you know. Knowledge of the scripture alone will not take you far. See, this Daniel and the three Hebrew children, you know the advantage they had? The Bible says that they, they knew about, the, they read the books of the astrologers, they, read, they knew about their culture, and they knew also about their faith. So why they know so much about the other people? The other people did not know so much about them. So the problem where we sometimes is that we know so much about the Bible and we know so little about every other thing. And you want to now go and engage with somebody who has so much knowledge. It doesn't work that way. If you, are, if you go to Ukraine or you go to Gaza and you know all the scripture, if you don't know how to survive in a war zone, the scripture you know will not stop the bomb from landing on your head. You should know how to take cover in a military zone, in a war zone. You don't go there and be preaching and be sticking the word of... There is, a, there is a time and a place for everything. I'm serious, and that's, that, is, that, is, that is what has made some people enter into trouble. You go to a place before, you, what, did, what did the Bible say? It say, it say, when a, it say, if somebody wants to, if you want to go into the house of a strong man, there are certain things you say you should do, right? You don't go, <laughs> eh? you go to beware there, beware there. Beware of dogs. <laughs> he carry your Bible. And you tell me it's because after all, Daniel was with the lion in the den. You now go. In the name of you want to evangelize. And you, try, you see, do not trespass. <laughs> Let me tell you. The knowledge you had from where you are coming from will not keep you here. You, it will not keep you here. Find out 
you will struggle. If you don't have knowledge of how to live in this place, you will struggle. And you will make so many unwise decisions. And the, result, the reason for the unwise decision is because you have no knowledge. Because you are ignorant in the abundance of knowledge. Praise the Lord. You get knowledge by asking questions. Ask questions. Every successful man of God I know asks questions. They ask questions. Even Moses, when he was called, what did he ask? He said, God, who will I say that sent me? He asked questions. Mary, when he was met, she, she said, how will this thing be? You know the problem with Peter? You know the problem with Peter? <laughs> Peter is ready for answers when there is no question. Let's read Matthew, uh, Matthew 26, 30, 31 to 35. Matthew 26, 31 to 35. I never saw a place where Peter asked question. But before Jesus will finish, he will give an answer for where, where there is no question. But after, and then Jesus said to them, all, Jesus said to them, all of you will be made to stumble because of me that night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. And Peter answered and said to him, even if all are made to stumble because of you, I would never be made to stumble. Who asked him? Go ahead. And Peter, and Jesus said, As surely I say to you this night, before the roster crows, you will deny me three times. What did he say? Peter said, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And so said the disciples. Who asked him? If he was why, what would he ask? He would ask question. Lord, what will I do for this not to happen? As he answered, finish, did he deny Jesus? Did he not? That is the problem with Peter. He doesn't ask questions. He gives answers where there is no question. For you to be wise, learn to ask questions. Philip, it's also, again, when we meet people, when we want to evangelize, we know why we are not effective. We are telling them what we think they need to hear. We, are, we don't ask questions. Philip, when he met the Ethiopian Enoch, what did he ask? Huh? He said, understand thou what thou readest. And the man himself told him what was his problem. He said, how can I understand? But how many times do you go? You don't even engage people to ask questions, to know entirely where it is actually biting them. That will give you an insight. It will give you knowledge. And you will know how to enter them. That was what Philip did. He didn't just go there and, 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 and assume and just start talking to the Philip, Ethiopian Enoch anyhow. He, he, he did. He said, understand it, thou what thou readest. Wise people ask questions. There's somebody that asks you, you never miss your way. Pride will make you not to ask questions. And then you end up where you did not intend to go to. Praise the Lord. What does wisdom do for us? Wisdom will save a nation. It save a church. Save a people from the sword and destruction. There's a story in, first, in 2 Samuel 20. Let's Give me verse 16 and 22. 2 Samuel 20. Then a wise woman cried out from the city, Hear Israel, please say to Jacob, Come nearby that I may speak with you. Just go to verse 22. Verse 22 of the same. Then the woman in her wisdom went to all the people and they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bish, and threw it to Joab. Then he blew a trumpet and they withdrew from the city. 
and so forth. If you read the story, you find out that it was from the wisdom of this woman that the city was saved. In Acts 23, verse 1 to 10, Paul was before the court. And the Bible says that there were the Pharisees and the Sadducees there. The Bible says that Paul, when the thing was hard, the Bible said that Paul observed that there was the Pharisees and the and the Sadducees. And these are two people, they, they don't believe in the same thing when it comes to resurrection. I will say that when he perceived them, he now said, I did not do anything, no. I didn't do anything. It's just because of what I, I said, I believed in resurrection and everything. At that instance, the Sadducees and the Pharisees began to, began to fight among themselves. He put confusion into them. What was that? Wisdom. If he did not have knowledge that of what these people believe, how would he have put that confusion into them? But that was, at that point in time, he did not, he, 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 he did not have to pray. He just used his number six and put up something and, and put confusion in them. So when I say wisdom can save a people, a church, from the sword of destruction. Wisdom will help you to make better choices. Ecclesiastes 1.7. Wisdom will make, help you to make better choices. Wisdom is not weakness. It is just a better choice over foolishness. Ecclesiastes 7.1. What does it say? A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. There are certain, certain choices you make. It's not because you are weak, but it's just you made a choice over foolishness. He said a good name is better than precious. There are certain things you just don't want to drag it because of your name. Not because you are weak. Wisdom is, will help you to make better choices. Wisdom will help you to build your house. Proverbs 14, 1. Wisdom will help you to build your house. Say a wise woman builds her what? But the foolish one pulls it down with whose hand? Her own hands. Let that thing. Like I said before, it doesn't mean you are foolish. It doesn't mean you are weak. It just means that you are what? Wise. You let certain things go in the house, not because it is comfortable, not because you are weak, not because you are foolish, but because you are what? Wise. Because a wise woman, a wise man, does what? Builds her house, or his house. Wisdom will increase love. Proverb 9, 8. Wisdom will increase love. Proverb 9, 8. Do not correct a scoffer, lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, and he will do what? And he will love you. Wisdom would do what? Increase love. We have, I was having a discussion with my wife some time ago. And then I sent her a message. She did not understand. She, she told me that she did not understand. I tried to explain. To me, explain. She, a few weeks later, something happened. She on her own sent me a message. Now she, that now she understands that message I sent to her. It didn't look, it was difficult for her to understand initially. But when the reality came, she had to look the message and tag the message and tell me, now I understand this message. It will increase understanding and increase love. Praise the Lord. Wisdom 
will make you follow instruction and save you from the destruction that comes from knowledge. Proverbs 13.1. Remember I told you that knowledge without wisdom can destroy. A wise son hears his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. A wise son hears his father's instruction. So wisdom will make you follow instruction and save you from destruction that comes with knowledge. Because knowledge destroys Two, without wisdom. So when you apply wisdom, it saves you from the destruction that comes with knowledge. When I was working in the aviation, I was supposed to go for a flight, and there was a crash that happened just while we were waiting for, to, to go for our own flight. And what, and what was the essence of the crash? The pilot was advised that the weather is not good. Every other plane waited on the tarmac. He waited when he became impatient for whatever reason. He has many years of experience. He's an experienced pilot. And he decided, he said he knows what to do. He, he, he took off. This was in, 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 in Abuja. Just take off. He did not even finish climbing to get into cruise. <laughs> The flight crash with passengers. What caused it? Wisdom, knowledge that does what? Puffed up. And it destroyed him and destroyed the world. Those that started to wait were not wise. He was the only wise and knowledgeable person. And he took off. And they perished. So wisdom will help you to heed to instruction. Praise the Lord. Wisdom will refine your zeal. Romans 2, 10 to. Romans 10 to. Finally. For I bear witness that they have zeal for God, but what? Not according to knowledge. Nobody is born with wisdom. Let me tell you. Nobody is born with wisdom. You know why I know that? The Bible says that what? Foolishness is in the heart of a child. Every child is born with foolishness. And you are once a child. So nobody is born with wisdom. You grow into wisdom by attaining knowledge and knowing how to apply it, and you, became, you become wise. So I say, foolish wisdom is going to refine your zeal. You know, some people, so many people have sent more people out of the church than they wanted to get them in because of zeal. A lot of people have pushed more people, not because that's what they intended, but because, of, because they did not miss their zeal with knowledge. And that knowledge did not guide how they would speak. It did not guide how they approach them. So they push more people out than they intended to get in. But when you have wisdom, when you have knowledge, you'll be able to retain people. Then you come to that point where the Bible says, let your words be seasoned with salt. Wisdom, knowledge, and wisdom will make your words to be seasoned with salt. And your good intentions and your zeal will bring the desires results. Let's bow our heads and pray. Where, where do you think you need the knowledge and the wisdom of God in your life? I tell people, after the word of God, after prayer, the next important thing in the life of a Christian is knowledge. Because even Bible says, my people, they pray and do not receive because the acts are miss. You need wisdom to have a better understanding of the scripture. Three important things, the scripture, prayer, and knowledge.